Maybe upstream some way. I better have a look. That is, unless you'd like to go. No thanks, I'll hold on to these. Uh -huh. Figured. Sorry, I figured I could help. Help? What are you doing? Why are you following me? Following you? I, I wasn't following you. It's just that, well, you're way out here away from town. I, I, I thought you were lost. No, no, that wasn't it either. It's just that I, I never saw anyone quite so beautiful. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You better let me. Look, I'm only going right down to that house, so just let me be. Well, I can at least... You heard her, mister. You turn around right off the way you come. Get off my land. Ah, you must be Mr. Grant. I'm Nick Barker. I don't care who you are, and I told you to go. Look, mister, I, I was just trying to help your daughter. She don't need no help. I, you heard me, mister. Now, I don't want to have to use this. Well, you better not try using that. Because I got a right to be here. In case you've forgotten, Mr. Grant, this is Barkley property. When I paid my rent money, that made it my land for the time. I don't have to suffer nobody, Barclays included. You go on now, leave us our privacy. But I... I told you to go. Yeah, I'd uh, say you made that pretty plain.
Didn't you tell him who you were? First thing. But I may as well have told him I come to poison his well. Thank you, Silas. Oh, oh. Silas! Oh. Don't you like your coffee hot, Mr. Nick? Drink some water, drink some water. It's your trouble, Nick. You just jump right in before you know the temperature. Well, he could have told me. Well, I was talking about that girl. You know, if I was her father, I might have got a little heated up, too. All right, Heath. Jared, you rented the place to him. What sort of a man is he? Just a farmer. He didn't really say very much. I didn't know he had a wife or a daughter old enough to interest Nick. Anyway, I just didn't ask him too many questions after he paid a half a year's rent in advance. Well, that's strange, isn't it? For that kind of money, he could have bought a place instead of renting it. Well, maybe he figured he couldn't get credit to finance the rest or just had cash on hand. Anyway, Nick, you realize that legally you invaded the man's privacy. Well, still, the shooting was uncalled for. Well, I have to go out there and check on a couple of things, so I'll speak to him about it. No, oh, well, I'll go with you. No, no, it's huh? not necessary, Nick. I can handle it all alone. Oh, well, excuse me. But you know, it's strange that uh, Jerry didn't find out more about those people before he rented to them. Well, he never mentioned them at all. And that's even stranger. Oh, looky here. It's our tenants, the Grants. Yeah, they're right back. Nick, wait. No, 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 they can't be paying rent on the town street. I guess I can talk to her here. We know Jared's waiting. We're 40 minutes late already. Here will wait. Good morning, miss. I, uh, just thought maybe I'd check, see how your ankle's doing. It's just fine, thank you. Good, good. Now, Mrs. Grant, my mother's looking forward to meeting you. Maybe she could drop by and pay you a visit. No, please. Uh, you understand, my husband doesn't like company. I'm sorry. But please thank her just the same. Oh, I see. Well, my, uh, my mother's going to be terribly disappointed. Maybe uh, you could drop by and pay her. Uh, I think not. Good day, Mr. Barclay. How'd you like that? You asked for it. I sure did. Hey, Nick, that wheel for your carriage is ready. I'll pick it up tomorrow morning, Debbie. Damn your new tenants out the Northwoods farm? Oh, that's right. Maybe I'll just drum up a little business. What's the name? Uh, Grant. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. This ought to be good. Howdy there, Mr. Grant. Ladies. Name's Denby, Arthur W. Denby. Blacksmith, wheelwright, carter. Keep your cutlery sharp, make you the best plowshare in the valley. Ain't that right, Mr. Clay? That's right. I've got no need of those services. No telling when you might, though, is there? I'm a farrier, too. Take good care of your horse's hooves. Do all your shoeing. Do my own shoeing. Looks it, too. Better try me. <laughs> That was only a joke, friend. Here, have a stove. I never touch the things. Hebron. Uh, you don't have to be unfriendly about it. Well, they gave you leave to talk to us. Well, pardon me, mister. I was only trying to be neighborly. Well, what do you make of that? Just what I expected. What got into him? Just plain cussed us, I'd say. Some tenant you got. What was that name she called him? Huh? Oh, oh, Herman. Yeah, Herman. I think it was Hebron. Yeah, Hebron. Hebron, that's what I thought. Over in Utah. Common name of them Mormons. Mormons? Say, you don't think Grant did. Why not? You Barclays know anything about them, where they come from? And he don't smoke, never touches the thing. That's their way. And how about tea and coffee? How much does he buy? Come to think of it, none. Not a pound since they've been here. Of course not. They're Mormons, and that explains a lot. Yeah, it, it might have that. And they're here, in our valley. And why not? I'll tell you why not. Because they're no good, none of them. 
They call themselves saints, but they're more like devils. Oh, now, come on. You can't dislike a man just because of his religion. It ain't got nothing to do with religion. How come they've been driven out of every place they've ever been, way out in the wilderness to set up their own state? Now, what are they doing here? Grant's not bothering you. Yes, he is just by being here. I'm telling you, no telling what's going to happen. Those people are murdering heathens. Oh, well, now, now that's stupid. Is it? Yes. Did you ever hear of the Mountain Meadows Massacre? Of course, everybody's heard of that. They say the Indians did the actual killing. They say. But Mormons egged them on. Mormons bossed them, and Mormons probably helped them, too. A whole wagon train full of peaceful, helpless settlers murdered in cold blood. And I had an uncle and two cousins on that train. So you can see, I got no use for Mormons. It makes me sick to see him in this valley. And you, Barclays, rented him a farm. What's the matter with Denby? He doesn't like Mormons. Our people had rent to him. He seems to think that the Grants are Mormons. Well, he's right. They are. You knew they were? No, I guessed it. And you forgot to mention it. Well, I didn't think it was very important. After all, a man's religion's his own business, isn't it? Well, now, Jared, that has nothing to do with it. It can just cause an awful lot of trouble around here is all. Well, Grant doesn't strike me as the type who's going to stir up trouble. Well, now, he was pretty handy with a gun. Well, Dinby is the type. Yeah, his type is always the problem. Well, he isn't about to forget this none too soon. Can you meet me back here a little later? Well, I thought you wanted to sign those papers. Well, I do, but I have to take care of something first. See you here about three? All right, fine. Come on, I'll let you buy me a beer. visitors? We don't have no visitors. No one, none. Well, now, I'm not exactly a visitor, am I? I stop by as your landlord, see if there's anything you need. How's that pump? It's all fixed. There's no need to look. How about the roof on the shed? Need any more shingles? Mr. Barkley, I paid you your money, and I don't need no help. Now, I appreciate your interest, but we like our privacy. Is that the way all Mormons feel? How'd you know that? It wasn't really very hard to guess, Mr. Grant. I think maybe I've guessed a couple of other things, too. It might be wise for you and me to have a little talk. I'll put that thing away. Come in. You're welcome, Mr. Barclay. Mrs. Grant? And this is your daughter? Emelina. Miss Emelina? I could quick make up some lemonade. Ain't no social call. You had something on your mind. As a matter of fact, I do. I think it'd be a good idea if we got to know a little bit more about each other. For instance? For instance, why you came here. Why not? It's good farming country, ain't it? There aren't any other Mormons here, Mr. Grant. You ain't interested in why I come here. You're only interested in how quick you can get us away. Well, I paid my money and I ain't leaving. Now, nobody said anything about leaving. Well, I'm saying it. I want you out of here. Leave us alone. I'm interested in why you left Utah to come here and hide out on this farm. Why you don't want any visitors, no contact from anybody. Now, there has to be a reason for that. What reason would I have to hide out? I think it's the same reason that most Mormons are hiding out now. Going out onto the desert, some to Canada, some to Mexico. And most, I'm afraid, to jail eventually. I don't know what you're driving at. I'm talking about the Mormons who refuse to obey the new law, who refuse to give up their plural wives. Semolina isn't your daughter. No, she's my sister. And I don't believe that either. She's your second wife, isn't that right? Can't prove that. Is this 
your Bible? Do you leave that be? They usually contain records. Hebron Jethers Grant, married June 12th, 1872, to Eliza May Goodhue. Married May 30th, 1878, to Mary Emmelina Hewitt. <laughs> Did you have to know? It's nothing to you. I'm afraid it is. If only as your landlord. People already know you're Mormons. Unfortunately, that could bring trouble enough. But when they find out about this... You don't want any trouble? No more than you. Well, you could just forget it. You could forget your... I can't soul. do that, Mr. Grant. Now, the laws against bigamy in California are explicit. If I let you go on living here and breaking the law, I'll become an accessory to the crime. I'm simply trying to tell you that you can't live in this house under the circumstances. You can't run me out. I won't leave. I paid. I'll give you your money back. I don't care. I don't want it. I won't leave. There's no solution for you here. Can't you see that? You can go on breaking the law, but sooner or later it's going to catch up with you. If you don't do something about it, believe me, there are plenty of people who will. Now, what am I to do? I can't answer that. I can only tell you the consequences of doing nothing. It's your problem, your decision. You'll have to make it soon. I can't give you much more time. Four times, four times I had to run. As a boy, my folks burned out in Missouri, and again in Illinois, my poor dead. I turned out a Zion itself by my own people. Sent to wander homeless in the wilderness, bereft of God. And then again in Arizona, and now here. You know what that's like? I can imagine. But you cannot live in California with two wives. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Give up one of them? Now, you tell me, Mr. Lawyer, which one? Now, which one of these faithful women am I supposed to give up and turn out penniless and helpless into the world? Did it ever occur to you and your lawmakers that I might love my wives, both of them equally, and they might love me? Did it ever occur to you that, that these women might be happy in this house, that these marriages are made in heaven? and sanctified in the temple of the Lord. This is a house of love and peace and blessed harmony, a house of God. I'm tired, lawyer. I'm tired of being spat on, reviled, and called every obscene name because of what I believe, because of the way I worship my God. I'm tired of having my marriage defiled and my wife's name sullied and treated like the filth of the earth. I've had enough of it, and I won't take any more of it, and I won't run away from it. I believe what I've done is right good and righteous in the name of the Lord, and I will be judged by him and by no other. Not by you, not by anybody in this valley, not by anybody else. Get out, Mormon. We don't want you here. Get out of our valley. I'll kill him. They got no right to do that. Give me that rifle. Don't be a fool, man. Give it to me. You let me take care of this. Denby, you be smart. Ride off and leave these people alone. What are you doing here, Jared? This ain't your fight. I'm making it mine. Well, I ain't got nothing against you. We've been friends a long time. You're not being very friendly at the moment. Well, it ain't you. I mean, I don't blame you for renting to him. He probably fooled you, too. But we're not going to have any Mormons around here. Who's we? All of us and a lot more, too. Now, I don't want no trouble with you, Jared, but... We're not going to run from it, neither. We mean to turn them out. So maybe uh, you better do it first. And if I don't? Then we will. And folks might blame you for bringing them here, and you might not like what they do. It might not just be a busted window. Now you listen carefully. Ride out and don't come back. If you do, there'll be a warrant for your arrest. You're going to regret this, Jared. There's your answer, Mr. Grant. I mean to fight. You lose. Maybe not. You haven't got a leg to stand on, legally or otherwise. Now, what else can I do? You can go to Mexico. Nobody will bother you there. Run again? 
Well, then there's only one other answer, isn't there? No. Never. Mr. Barkley? Mrs. Grant? I'll tend the supper. Hebron, what Mr. Barclay says might not be right. About what? There's probably no other answer for us but to do like the others. Go to Mexico. You want that? You want me to go to a foreign nation where I don't even speak their tongue? How am I going to earn a living for us? Find a farm like this one? No, we ain't come to that yet. God willing, we never will. I ain't done fighting here yet, Em. What is fighting the answer? Won't they just hate us the harder? Well, is running away to a foreign nation the answer? This is my country, Emmalina, just as much as it is the Barclays. I was born here, and I mean to die here. I'm an American. I'm not a Mexican. But we can't stay here. Now, Em, you stop your fretting. You trust Hebron like you always done. I took care of you till now, didn't I? Yes, Hebron. And I always will. I ain't gonna desert you, neither one of you. So don't you worry. The Lord's gonna take care of us and provide like you always done. trip out to the Grants. What'd you find out? Found out your taste is improving, for one thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. But you're not running in luck, Nick. Huh? How's that? The lady's already married. Huh? The young one? The name's Emmalina, and she's Mrs. Grant. Oh, what about the other one? She's Mrs. Grant, too. Sign here, here, and here. Of course, Mormon. Oh, well, that explains why I didn't want anyone around. Yep. So? What'd you say to him? Told him I'd give him a little time to decide what to do. Uh, meanwhile, you keep all this to yourself. Isn't that what you call being an accomplice, Brother Jared? It is. So what am I supposed to do? Run down the middle of town, tell Denby, tell the sheriff, have him arrest him, throw him in jail? What good would that do those two women? Well, now, that is his problem, isn't it? I mean, a man isn't supposed to be married to two women at the same time. What if he loves them both equally, Nick? Well, I doubt that. Says he does. Well, he can just give up one of them. What if they both love him? Look, the man is old enough to be Emmalina's father. Now, she'd be better off without him. Sounds like a little wishful thinking. Well, I'll tell you what is wishful thinking. If this little problem goes any further, it's all going to blow up in our face. Well, Nick, I told him I was going to give him a little time, and that's what I'm going to do. Evening, storekeeper. We need some supplies, some flour, lard, and some cartridges. Came too late. Already closed. But we drove all the way in here. Can't help it. Ought to take a decent time of day. I don't know why a body'd wait till so late. Unless they was afraid they were going to be seen by somebody. Now, look. You'd open up again for some other man, wouldn't you? I might, and I might not. Well, my money's good as anybody else's. Please, Mr. Clay. I'd like to oblige for your sake, Mrs. Grant, but I... Now you deal with me. I'll take my trade somewhere else next time. I'd just as soon you did. Where do you go? Not everybody will deal with you. You... You 
know what you are? Hebron. A swine, a filthy swine. Now you get in that Get your stinking your... hands off of me! You, Mormon. Oh, Hebron. Oh. Look what you've done to my husband. Husband? You? You too? Both of you? <laughs> well, I'll be... <laughs> oh, Emelina. Living in sin right in our midst. Not to mention him flouting the law. If he's got two wives now, he'll be looking for more. No decent folks in the valley will be safe. Well, what about it, Jared? You're the one man in town who knows anything at all about the Grants. Is it true or isn't it? Yes, it's true, Fred. He's married to both of them. You just never got around to telling me. Well, I didn't know for sure myself until yesterday, and I felt I had to give the man a little time to make his decision. You had no right to do that, Jared. I know I didn't. I was hoping maybe we could solve this thing without anyone getting hurt. What are you going to do now? Only thing I can do. Arrest him. I mean a long sentence, Fred. Courts have been awful tough on these cases. Yeah, I know. Leave those two women alone, nobody to support them. Well, that's not my problem, and I might add it's not yours either. I don't know, Fred. Maybe it is. When a law works this kind of hardship on people. Jared, you're a lawyer. You know every law works a hardship on somebody. But that fact in itself isn't enough to keep us from doing the jobs we have to do. I know, but can it really hurt Fred to give the man just a little more time? A little more time? That law was passed two years ago. And Grant married his second wife two years before that. That law is retroactive. It penalizes people for doing something that wasn't a crime when they did it. Stands up in court. I'm talking about justice, Fred. How we enforce this law is the measure of our humanity. You, uh, been over at Saloon and heard Denby? Yeah. Time's running out, Jarrett. And it may be that I won't be able to give him time. So you tell him to hurry up. I'll go out and see him this afternoon. And thanks, Fred. Still working on the shed? Yes. It's coming along fine, isn't it? Fine. Such a nice farm. The best we've ever had. Hebron likes it here. Well, they'll drive us out again, Eliza. Mr. Barclay says so. Please, sister, don't talk about it. It upsets me so. But, Eliza, you can't just ignore it. I leave such things to Hebron. So should you. He'll know what to do, and God will provide. Hebron can be wrong. Of course, dear. But God can't. Eliza, what if there were just one of us? Now, sister, you know I don't like to talk of death. No, not death. I'm talking about the law. It says that we both shouldn't be living with Hebron. That's a bad law, and I don't talk about such things. I don't even think about them. Hebron will know what to do. Yes. You've always had Hebron or someone to look after things for you, haven't you? I've been very fortunate, Emmalina. Well, I haven't. I've had to look out for myself.
He would get along fine with just one of us. And there wouldn't be any more trouble from the law or anyone else. Sister, I don't understand you. Shouldn't even think about such things. We're here, the three of us, and happy. Oh, Eliza, I'm sorry. I won't talk about it anymore. I'm going out for a while. All right, dear, don't be long. Well, it's about time we met, Mrs. Grant. You're so kind. And I wasn't even sure you'd receive me. Why not? I admire your devotion to what you believe is right. Well, that's just it, Mrs. Barclay. I'm not so sure what is right anymore. Oh, I don't mean my religion. I mean the plural marriage. And it's not that I'm unhappy. I'm not. It's just that since they passed this law... I understand. Well, Hebron says that there's a higher law that we must obey. But if they send him to prison, I think it would kill him. And I don't think the Lord would ask that. Have you talked this over with your husband? Oh, yes. But Hebron is a steadfast man. And when he's sure in what he believes, well, it's very difficult to change his mind. I've talked about Mexico a lot, but he doesn't want to go. It might be for the best. I know, but I can't force him. And uh, I think there may be another way that would be better. What other way? Well, I've thought and thought about it, and that's why I've come to see your son. He's a lawyer. And he could advise me about, well, a divorce. For you? Well, Hebron could get along with just one of us. And Eliza's been with him longer. Besides, she needs someone. I don't. I, I can manage by myself. And one of the reasons Hebron married me was so that I could give him children when Eliza hadn't given him any. But I haven't either. Well, what about your feelings? I'd rather know that he were free than, than in jail. Mrs. Grant, you must be very sure about this. Do you think your son can handle it? You can ask him yourself. Mother, it's nice to see you, Mrs. Grant. Mrs. Grant would like to ask you something. Oh? What can I do for you? Mr. Barclay, will you get me a divorce? You were right. We can't go on together. You're doing the wisest thing possible, Mrs. Grant. Does your husband know? Well, he has to be told, of course. I'll tell him as soon as I... Knowing your husband, I think it'd be better if I approach him first. She can stay here till I get back. Don't you worry, everything will be all right. I don't believe you. What have you done to her? Turned her against me? You... Now, calm down, Grant. You've got to see this thing the way it really is. You're the one who's forced her into this, and you know it. What do you mean? I mean you can't go on breaking the law or fighting it. She sees that even if you don't. No. I won't let her. She can't do it. I'm afraid it's out of your hands. I won't let her! I'll bring her back if I have to kill her. Now, wait a minute, Grant.
Hold it, hold it. Now, come for my wife. Yes, we have been expecting you. Didn't you? And I'll use this if I have to. Now, when are you going to stop playing hero, and when are you going to get through that thick head of yours that you're not going to fight the world all by yourself? Huh? Now, why don't you put that thing down right there, and as soon as you decide to start acting like a gentleman, then you will be fully welcome into our home. How's that? There, now, isn't that better? Where's Jared? You never mind that. Where's my wife? What'd you do with her? Oh, we haven't done anything with you. You turned her against her unlawful husband. You, I seen you cast an eyes at her from the first day. Now, you're not making much sense, Mr. Grant. Your wife makes a great deal more. Now, you can't tell me my wife would decide to go away from me all by herself without being pushed into it. Then I'll tell you. It's true. I'm a leader. I'm not going to let you take my wife away from me. I'll fight you. I'll fight the whole country if I have to. Oh, no, that's all. And I'll have the Lord on my side. No, Hebron, you don't. I don't think the Lord has taken sides in this. Anyway, I don't want you to fight. You don't mean you really want to leave me? Not want to, Hebron. Have to, don't you see? No, no, I don't. No, you don't, Emily. Now, listen, we'll go to Mexico just like you want. Uh. You don't really mean that. Yes, I do. I always meant to. Only now we'll leave right away. Tonight. Tomorrow. You'll never be happy there. Yes, I will. Only... Am you going to come back to me? I can't do without you. I love you. Do you really promise about going to Mexico? I promise. <laughs> I love me no more fight. No, I'd never use that gun for nothing but squirrels. I'm mighty glad to hear that. Oh, Mr. Barkley. I'm, I'm truly sorry. Forget it. One of the hazards of the legal profession, I guess. I just went out of my head. I don't know what I was doing. Mr. Barkley, we're going to Mexico. Mexico? Well... Then I'd say the sooner you get started, the better. We'll start packing that wagon right away, tonight. How's that? Mr. Grant, you're going to Mexico, you're going to need this. What's that for? It's the balance of your rent money. You're a fair man, Mr. Barkley. I'm awful sorry about your head. Hey, Brent. <laughs> Time, Clay. You got the kerosene? Outside on the buckboard. But tell me, you sure about this? You know that house belongs to the Barclays. What do you care? They got it coming to them for letting them Mormons in. Now let's go. <laughs> This is all foolishness. I really don't see any need of doing all this tonight. Well, you told Mr. Barkley. No. And you took his money. No. Well, you don't want to cause him any more trouble. Well, what trouble can there be tonight? I, I, I mean, wh what's, what's it matter if we wait till, till the morning or the next day, for that matter? Well, you just don't know what might happen. And we've already caused that family enough upset. Now, you promised. I know, but you see, Emma... Hebron! All right, all right, all right. I was just... Just making talk don't mean anything. Now... You want to help me with the sideboard, Hebron? Liza, I don't see how we can take that. We can't leave it behind. You just made it special. Well, we have to. We can't take everything. It's going to be a hard enough trip. Is it a long way, Hebron? To Chihuahua? It's a long way. A lot of country in between. Good country, though. Farming and ranching. And all in the United States. With its laws. Now, Emma, I wasn't suggesting a thing. 
Even though we might find places, lonely places, where a body could settle in and never see an outsider from one month to the next. But no, sir, we're, we're going straight to Mexico. Never you fear, I made you promise and I'm going to keep it. How long will it take, Hebron, to get there? About a month, maybe more, depending. On what? Well, on the weather, mostly. It ain't the right time of year for it. One thing we could do with all that time on the road, we can learn some of the language. Don't none of us speak a word of Spanish. How will we learn? Find me one of them books somewhere along the road. I don't know if I can learn, Hebron. I never was much good at foreign tongues. Well, neither am I, but we got to try. We have to. And, and we will. We, we will. We'll, we'll do just fine. You'll see. Now, don't you worry. We'll, we'll do just, just fine. Yes, but not like here. Well, no, not exactly. It was nice here. At least we ain't being run out. It's my own decision. Is it? Oh, maybe it'd have been better if I... Now, Em, you hush. This is the way I want it. It's gonna be all right, now stop your worrying. You just leave all that to Hebron. Like Eliza here does. I'll take good care of you. And God will provide. Sure he will. You just leave everything to Hebron and my Lord. Fred! Fred! Yeah, what do you want? Hebron, you promised. I told you Mormons to get out. You should have listened. You had your chance. We're doing that, can't you see? We're packing to go. No, we ain't budging. I won't be run off. But Hebron, please, you promised. I won't be run off, I tell you. You hear that, blacksmith? We're not budging. <laughs> None of that now. Oh, please, for God's sake, don't do this. Tell them we're going. Tell them. I can't do that. Don't you see him? I can't do that. I can't be humiliated by swine like that anymore. I won't be run out of my home, out of my country. I won't be. I'd rather die. But you promised. I'm sorry, Emma. I gotta do it. I gotta fight back. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't. They'll kill you. I can't help that. I got to. What are they doing?
Lord answered my prayer. Well, Mr. Grant, wagon's all loaded and ready to go. Thank you. Sure I'm sorry about the farm. Nothing that can't be fixed. The most important thing is you're all still alive. Yes. Well, we'll be leaving then. Have a nice trip. Thank you. Got a lot of work to get done back at the ranch, so good luck to you. Thank you. Jared? Eliza, get on in. Whoops, better not forget this one. Oh, no. That's mine. It stays. Stays? What do you mean, Emelina? I'm not going, Hebron. What are you talking about? You know we can't stay not here. Not we. Me. Em, I don't understand. I was right the first time. Um, I'm getting that divorce. Do you know what you're saying? Yes. I'm saying you're not the only man in the world. But I'm your husband. You love me. I did once. I'm not so sure anymore. Somehow you're not the man I thought. Anyway, I'm sure I can get over it. I want the chance to try. But, Em, I love you. I suppose you do, Hebron. In your own way. But, uh... Somehow, that's not enough anymore. But... No. Go with Eliza. Don't you understand, Hebron? I don't love you anymore. Now go. Sister! Goodbye, Eliza. I don't understand this, but I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. Goodbye, sister. Emelina. Goodbye, Hebron. I don't know what you're doing. You always did have a mind of your own. You've always hated it. Well, maybe so, but I loved it, too. Goodbye. Go. Now. 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 Mr. Barkley, would you take me to the railroad station? Of course I will. Where are you going to go, Emelina? Back to Utah, I think. I know people there. What about the divorce? There won't be a divorce. But he won't know that, will he? And it'll be all right. Because he won't be breaking any laws. 